Well, now we got another Big Mac. And we got some Mega Nubs. And we got a Gorkonaut. What should we pay next? I know. More Max. I'm old Big Mac. <laughs> this is the red ones go faster. Wah! Wah, indeed, old Big Mac driving the red buggy. This is the red ones go faster. I am also the old Big Mac. And today we are painting up our Mech Boys that we converted last week for October. Now I know what you're thinking to yourself. Big Mac, all you do is paint mechs. Yes, this is true. <laughs> Remember that part of our whole Orktober challenge is not just painting as much as we can for our army, but making sure they're actually useful. And a couple of the units that are really useful in 10th edition 40k for orcs are regular mech boys. Not the big mechs, the regular mechs. Because these guys heal the wounds on your vehicles, such as our Gorky Morky Knot. So having these guys for the army was really important. And now that they've been built and base coated uh, with a nice primer, it is time to get them painted. So might as well paint both of them up at the same time. And uh, with Orcs, I like to start with the skin. Now I've said before in numerous videos that I tend to vary my skin tones based on just whatever colors I grab. And that is absolutely true. Uh, orcs are fungus and they are all different and uh, yeah if you paint the skin all different instead of having a single recipe it makes it easier to add units and it gives your army some flavor and variety so this one's gonna get this color war boss green <laughs> I'm trying a new angle here on this one of the the comments I've gotten on some of the past painting videos is that uh, it was a little hard to see some of what was going on so trying some new camera mount technology here so that uh, you all can see what exactly we're doing here. Do, do, do. So with the orcs, I like to start with the skin because it is the deepest layer, meaning it is the layer furthest away from us. And if you get any of that, you know, over any of the other stuff, it's fine because you're going to be painting over it anyway. You know, it's funny, I do own one of these. I should probably use it. It's way easier to hold and keep it there in the frame. <laughs> so you want to get in there, get the neck, get under the chin. Uh, those are all important areas. Man, I wish these pots would stay open. That is one thing I do miss. This is why I tend to prefer Tamiya paints too. You unscrew them and they're just open and they stay open. <laughs> Alright, now we got way too much on there. Sure, we're still in frame here. So I still can't quite see the screen when I'm painting, but at least it's closer. I don't have to lean over quite so far. So again, making improvements, making improvements. Every video is an improvement. That's my that's my goal. <laughs> Not only for me, but for you, the viewer that is here sticking with me through all of October and beyond. Here at the red ones go faster. I see like that. I totally just blurted all over that. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna be painting that anyway, some other color. <laughs> So that's why starting with the deepest layer is a great idea. All right, now he's got bare arms, so I've got to go ahead and paint those big old beautiful bulky shoulders. Now for those of you that missed the video, you should go check it out. These mechs are both scratch built or conversions. Uh, this particular one uh, started life as one of the monopose uh, regular boys from the combat patrol. Uh, so this was a great way to uh, use that pose somewhere in the army uh, where it's going to be not obvious that there's already one just like it because one's going to be a regular boy and one's going to be a mech boy. Alright, and just like that we are done with all of the green on this mech boy. Let's switch colors and mech boys. And this one is our much more standard mech boy. We built him out of the... Uh, uh, one that comes in the Luda and Burna box, the Spana, who is basically a little mini mech boy. And this base color is the Auric Flesh, which is the Age of Sigmar Swamp Orcs. It's a much browner green, uh, but yeah, it makes for a really cool different base color for some orc skin. And he is all base coated up too for his skin. Yeah, right. here we are some time later, and mostly because I've already showed a lot of these steps on other videos. It's just more base coating and then a couple of washes. So I uh, did some brown on the leathers, 
did some lead belts around the metal, put null oil on the, the uh, metal, and hydroxyl shade on the brown. Easy peasy, can't get any easier than that. So there are three total colors on this, uh, plus the primer. So that's that's how we've gotten to this base coat step. And I mean, these, you know, technically are tabletop ready. They, you've got three different colors on there. You know, they, they look decent. They've got, you know, definition. You can tell what weapons they have, but obviously it's not good enough for what we're gonna do. You'll also notice there's some color going on here in the background and things that we are not focusing on this video. And that's because Orcs being a horror army, you do want a batch paint. So if you already have your skin color out and you've got a squad of guys sitting here ready to go, keep spreading that skin color. It saves you time later. So we'll get to those guys in another video, but for now we'll just scoot over there and we'll keep working on these. So where I'm at on these is it is ready for my signature orange color. Once again, that's the Tamiya X6 is what I use, but again, finding finding your color, what works for you to make your army stand out is definitely going to be the best thing to do. So, I'm going to pick out certain things on here to uh, make them pop, make them a part of the log. What you want to do is back up a little bit and like put them down tabletop pipe and be like, okay, do I have enough here? Is it giving the look I want? Uh, the orange up here looks good. He needs some more on him, himself. And that's where I got to really figure out where to get this. And he's got his little apron down here. And I think I'm going to do his apron, which is something I've done on a lot of my orcs is actually their cloth is the orange. Or if they have a little armband or something like that. It's just an easy way to get that pop of color in as an accent without um, going bananas trying to figure out every random little piece of metal to paint. Being that these guys are mechs, and in the lore of my force, they are helping the big mech that is responsible for all these contraptions, and he's the one that paints everything orange. They're going to have a lot of orange on them, showing their higher standing in said army. There we go. And it's got enough orange on him to draw some attention from any angle. This side, this side, front, and back. And yeah, that looks good. Let's do the other one. Alright, and same with him. We've got orange from the back, and the left, and the front, and the right. 
All right, about the last thing I'm going to show you here is actually how to do muzzle burn. These are custom mega pistols, and they have almost a burner esque looking tip on them. And the secret sauce to that is a oops, yellow, a red, and a blue uh, shade to put on top of the metal. We're going to start with the yellow furthest from the muzzle. The trick here is to draw a vertical stripe. Again, this is the furthest from the muzzle. We're going to draw a vertical stripe. All the way around it. And again, this is going to be a muzzle burn, so you don't want to be too clean. The other thing you want to do is you want to keep working with it while it's wet. You don't want to let it dry too much, because we are going to be uh, feeding these into one another. Alright, so that is our yellow. Get rid of that real quick. Move immediately to our red. Now, another vertical stripe, this time halfway between the, the muzzle and the end. So this is your middle stripe, is the red. You don't want anything too bright, by the way. You'll see that I'm using a fairly dark and desaturated red. Again, we're going for a muzzle burn here. We're not trying to make it bright. We're trying to make it look like burned metal. Alright, that is our red. Now we go to our blue. And same thing with the blue. Fairly dark. Not a very bright, not a very punchy, fairly dark. And this one you want to do right on the edge of the muzzle, the very front part. Like so. Now you should see this gradient that goes blue to red to yellow on the metal. We'll do the same thing on this one here. See that? Blue to red to yellow. Now while all of those are still wet, you can take your brush and kind of go from the yellow to the blue in a couple of random places just to kind of rub it in a bit and even go back the other way and give it more of a natural burned feeling. When that dries, that is going to look the absolute business. Like we've got some muzzle flare and burn on our custom mega shooters. Look at that. Doesn't that look cool? Alright, so we've done our uh, muzzle burn, our silver sponging, did the blue on his lenses, did a little bit of dried blood effect on his saw, and then I put some uh, more chipping over top of it to show that he's going to be. Uh, Cutting into, you know, some buggies and stuff more often is going to be cutting into people. And yeah, he is ready to go, except for a base. So I'm going to slap the basing stuff on, and that's going to be the end of our mech boys. And uh, yeah, put that on so it can dry overnight. All right, so here we are the next day. And, uh, you know, the only reason really that it's the next day is for putting the uh, texture paste down and letting it dry. It feels really good to know that uh, I can pretty much knock out a couple of minor characters in one evening. Because uh, realistically, you know, that's about the time you get to uh, work on some Warhammer stuff. So, you know, one evening and you can add a couple of units to your force feels pretty good. There was one more thing I wanted to show you all, though. And that was, I do a bit of weathering on these guys. And what I use are these uh, Tamiya weathering powders. So I've got this one here with the uh, sand and light sand for the desert stuff. And then this one here with the soot, specifically for these muzzle burns. So let me show you how much that really adds into the muzzle burn effect. So it kind of looks like a little eyeshadow palette or something, and they give this little foamy brush thingy, but I like the soot on this one. And then you see here, we've got that nice bright metal, right? And you just ever so lately rub the soot on it, and it will give it a um, actual burned effect, all right? So look at that muzzle now. And you can still see our colors showing through. First, look at the shiny one. See the difference? We could do this one as well. 
I like to use the soot on the barrels. I like to use it on the exhaust pipes. Um, anything like that that's going to get sooty. And then, yeah, and then like I said, the uh, the desert one, I use that for the sand to make it look like they're running through the dirt and stuff. I use these on the vehicles too. Um, it's got two different colors on there, but yeah, same thing. It just kind of, so like look at his boots here, right? You've got the, uh, the mud on the bottom of the boots, but it doesn't really sell the effect. Put a little bit of that on. And now his boots are actually dirty, but it doesn't look like paint because it's not paint. And yeah, and with that, and these guys are done. I will uh, I'll actually do another another uh, layer on the base rim and put a couple plants on them and call these guys complete. So yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Again, I'm just really happy that like realistically I was able to get these two uh, minor characters done in just one evening of work. Um, you know, it feels good. It makes, and it's not even like these are the only things I worked on because remember I did all the skin on my uh, Grot Squad too. So maybe we'll see if I can finish the Grots in just one evening or something like that. Should be doable. But yeah, it's again, more stuff done for Orktober. Feeling really good about it. Uh, yeah, so thanks for following along with uh, making our mech boys, and, and I think we might have maybe enough mechs for now. Until next time, log on!